it right now. And I'm going to premise this story tonight uh, from Ron Paul, LibertyReport.com, and that is from the archives of the growing threat of the police state. Don Casey, Jeff, Jeff Thomas, and uh, this other fellow, Nick, uh, recently discussed a critical topic, the rise of the police state in the former free world. Uh, Nick, in my experience, the U.S. is uh, some of the most aggressive aggressive police in the world, and I first noticed that when I was traveling many years ago. There's, there's an extensive conversation, well, but there's a conversation going on here between these fellows. But anyways, the idea is um, the militarization of American police, and, and I found that just before uh, uh, going to air tonight. Um, and, and I thought it was really, really perfect to uh, cover tonight what, uh, and of course, my link is out of place. So yeah, for the, those listening in a rebroadcast, you'll uh, excuse all of that. Pause, pause. <laughs> yeah, it's froze up over here. Just a second, please. I have to get back to the other link. All right, and, and thank you again, Kate, for your help. All right, so we're, we're starting out tonight. This is about uh, BLM's Agent Love, uh, deadly cruelty behind the shield of the infamous Dirty Dan. The feds are engaged in an extensive grudge match against Western dissidents without regard for the cost to justice or the tax powers. Arguments or opinions are that federal government its officers and agents, or its agencies are improperly and excessively armed, use military tactics, act outside their authority, and have engaged in the use of excessive force in other venues at other times. Las Vegas Review Journal reported alleged misconduct or excessive force by law enforcement, extended grudge matches by the federal government and its employees against people challenging their authority in general, and Westerners pushing back over control of public lands in particular. <clears throat> now, we're talking uh, Black Hawk helicopters, machine guns, grenade launchers, battering rams, explosives, chemical sprays, body armor, night vision, repelling gear, armored vehicles, and tanks. Clearly, we're not in Mayberry anymore. If we're not training cops as soldiers, giving them equipment like soldiers, dressing them as soldiers, when are they going to pick up the mentality of soldiers? If you look at the police department, their creed is to protect and serve. <clears throat> A soldier's mission is to engage his enemy in close combat and kill him. Uh, now, now, do we want police officers to, that, to have that mentality? Of course not. And that's from Arthur Reiser, former police officer, and member of the military. <clears throat> Public enemy number one for rural Utah sheriffs just happened to be a fellow peace officer, Dan Love, the Bureau of Land Management special agent in charge. According to court files, elected leaders and even deputies have confronted BLM rangers publicly challenging their authority. Elected law officers, uh, I'm sorry, elected law officers from Nephi to Blanding call him an arrogant and dishonest bully, uh, bully who has little regard for local authority and uh, dodges accountability, building a collaborative approach uh, to work, uh, police work on the state's federal lands. <clears throat> Love, uh, Reportedly just laughed when uh, Garfield County Sheriff James Danny Perkins uh, relayed ranchers' complaints about federal officer, officers removing uh, plastic feed tubs, uh, and, and those are like mineral blocks, uh, nutrients, and so forth um, that the cattlemen put out uh, for for their cows or cattle. That is, uh, and, and that's out. Uh, uh, okay, so. Uh, uh, federal officers removed plastic feed tubs from the range and threatened the ranchers with litter citations. Uh, so he drew some uh, controversy during, uh, during an undercover probe, probe of artifacts in Blanding in 2009. More recently, 
Love led the BLMs aboard a roundup of uh, Clive and Bundy's ca- cattle following an armed standoff. <clears throat> BLM killed many head of cattle that belonged to Clive and Bundy and his family and then uh, uh, sought to cover up in mass bur- burials. Uh, <clears throat> Tom, Tom Lockevar Stewart and uh, Pete Santilli went out and uh, did some recordings of that. <clears throat> A lot of uh, photographic evidence to that effect. <clears throat> also, it will be in the uh, the links uh, when, when I publish all the information here. Uh, by the way, again, this is uh, basically copy and paste verbatim. Uh, and thanks again to Kate for the uh, um, edit and uh, the help in that. <laughs> Even though I might not appear to be doing such a wonderful job that you have done for me. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, back to the story. Now, uh, why do you suppose they uh, they don't mention any, make any mention of what took place in Oregon in 2016? It's because uh, there are two ranchers, Stephen and Dwight Hammond, currently serving five-year sentences under terrorism charges for starting backfires to protect family, property, and cattle. One of those fires was allegedly due to the actions of a BLM agent starting a fire. However, emphasis added, uh, BLM creates the same fires with destructive results. Uh, definitely a lot, lot more to that story. Uh, I've covered it in the past with uh, feedback. Uh, I'll look for that link and bring that back in as well. Um, so Dan Love, the Bureau of Land Management agent, now under investigation by the agency's own Inspector General's office for egregious ethics violations related to the 2016 Burning Man Festival in Nevada. He has a history of cruel and ruthless behavior, which predates the current uproar over his thuggish tactics. Uh, prior to Love's involvement in the failed raid of the Bundy Ranch in April of 2014, he led the 2009 Federal Antiquities Team <clears throat> Operation Cerberus Action in the southeastern Utah, in southeastern Utah. Uh, the sting, which took uh, several years, several years, listen, <clears throat> and climax when federal, ra- uh, federal raids by hundreds of armed BLM and FBI officers on dozens of homes. It also led to the death of four men involved in uh, the case. <clears throat> Suicides, many of them. <clears throat> one of them uh, most certainly uh, was actual, and I won't comment on the others. Excuse me one sec. Take a lot of Okay, I <clears> had <throat> to take a squall in there. Um, so there's a lot more to that that I don't include in this, but uh, in the links that I will include, <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll follow that. <clears throat> so... Uh, where am I at here? The uh, yeah, uh, violations to the 2016 Burning Man Festival in Nevada is a history of cruel and uh, ruthless behavior, which predates that uh, uproar. uproar. Uh, so we, we skip ahead here uh, to where I was. Uh, so the Interior Department's Office of Inspector General investigated an unnamed Bureau of Land Management supervisory agent in Salt Lake City for more than a year on his ethics, on ethic complaints uh, with the independent panel concluding that breaches uh, had occurred. Uh, I had to scroll. Let me get back where I'm at. Sorry. Um Okay, now it's working. There we go. Uh, the agent with the Deseret, Deseret News has confirmed as Dan Love through a familiar... Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> the agent... Uh, <laughs> let me try again. Uh, the agent with the Deseret News has confirmed as Dan Love through a source familiar with the investigation is accused of using his position to secure preferential treatment for his family during the 2015 Burning Man event in Nevada, including using federal law enforcement officers as personal escorts for their safety, as well using uh, BLM vehicles to transport his girlfriend 
and uh, allowing her to uh, to share an overnight BLM lodging with him. And uh, the Burning Man $1 million uh, luxury compound to take care of BLM needs for the event. The, uh, the National Office of the BLM released a statement on the investigation saying it takes the allegations of misconduct seriously. Seriously? <clears throat> the prosecution in the Bundy Ranch case were found to be withholding information that could substantiate the offense's case that the Bureau of Land Management goons, under the direction of uh, Agent Daniel P. Love, were at not at Bundy Ranch to carry out a lawful court order, but were in fact going into tactical mode in order to murder uh, innocent civilians. In-dash video made public during the first two trials, uh, you can clearly hear crosstalk in the background asking agents to, mu to move communications to TAC lead channel 329 while communicating with ICP communications director uh, Tony Samunsky, uh, SAC, Daniel P. Love, Daniel P. Love snipers on the Mesa and other BLM tactical gunmen in the wash. Uh, Tony, he says, uh, testifies in uh, court under oath in the first Bundy trial that recordings of those transmissions were lost after the hard drive running the recording software had somehow mysteriously come unplugged during the protest on April 12th of 2014. Huh. And I was there. Uh, Saminsky also admitted under her oath uh, she had shredded garbage bags full of documents concerning Operation Gold Butte that were found in a dumpster. Gold Butte is where uh, Clive and Bundy uh, uh, run his cattle, and, and I actually I think the uh, the uh, bounds uh, were uh, beyond that, which is. Uh, now been designated uh, national monument. Um, more of that that uh, can't be communicated here uh, adequately. So uh, I'll finish here with a few things. Uh, so on January 26th of 2016, Lavoy, Ahmed Bunny, and the other folks on their way to a scheduled meeting in John Day, Oregon, in a forested area with extremely poor, if non-existent, cell phone coverage were set upon by modern-day highwaymen. <clears throat> the driver and passengers of the second vehicle submitted to the demands of the heavily armed interlopers. At gunpoint, they left the vehicle to sit on the side of the snow-covered roadway. The driver of the second vehicle, a white pickup, following the exit of one of the passengers that jumped out, sped away seeking the assistance of a peace officer. That is Sheriff Glenn Palmer of Grant County, Oregon, again, to whom he was on his way to meet with. But, yeah, we know who that driver was. He exited the vehicle, drawing fire away from the occupants within. One of them got shot anyways. Ryan Bundy, great guy, met him. Talked to him a lot and his brother Ammon. All that time I spent there. Good folks, really you know what else? So, some of the people that were charged, they were charged for words, not deeds. I want to leave you with this. Someone spoke out against what he believed to be a corrupt U.S. government. He says, uh, you take the First Amendment, which protects your right to free speech, to speak horribly of the government, if you so choose, would have protected this man. His name's Cox. And you're right, it should have. In fact, according to the ruling by the Supreme Court of the United States, SCOTUS, yeah, that's a word. SCOTUS. Or, SCOTUS, yes. <laughs> so in uh, Bradenburg versus Ohio, 1969, an individual can't be punished for an inflammatory speech unless it is likely to incite imminent, look up the word imminent, uh, on beyond this, imminent lawless action. <clears throat> oh, here it is. 
the exact definition of the word imminent has been clarified by the department. Oh, wait a minute, did I miss a line? Clarified by the court, yes. In a subsequent uh, Hess versus Indiana in 1973, and Hess was a man who had been part of a demonstration. A demonstration, uh, hmm, sounds familiar. And that occurred, uh, that occurred a street, the, the sheriff's department, uh, oh, I'm sorry, in a street that the sheriff's department uh, cleared the people from that street. The court found that has his speech when he vocalized aloud that they were going to take the FN street later, or, or again, whatever he said, was protected speech in part because his speech amounted to nothing more than advocacy of illegal action at some future time, perhaps. And therefore, it did not meet the imminent imminence requirement. <clears throat> Burleson was sentenced for uh, 68 years. And you know what they got him for? Not what he said or did at the time, but for what he said after. 68 years. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, who, who plied him with alcohol? Pumped him up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you have done? These same a-holes came to talk to me. And I told them, you know what I told them? I said, I'm here. Want to know what I'm carrying, what guns, whatever. I said, I'm here to stand as witness. And I'm armed with my phone, my voice, and my feet. These are these same guys looking about like, like the devil to whom they may consume. That's, I, I, I was there. I saw these people being charged or being persecuted. There are dissidents, yes, Terry, dissidents. They, they stand against corruption of the government. They're not anti-government, but anti-corrupt government. So I'll be there in October when uh, they combine uh, Eric Parker and uh, Scott Drexler along with Cliven Bundy. Ryan Bundy, Ammon Bundy, and Pete Santilli. Uh, oh, and Ryan Payne as well. Um, so they're going to try to do what they can to make sure that they have a conviction. Um, dissident? Yeah, I'm going to say they're dissidents. So uh, all of this is going to be cut and recorded, and, and I'll, I'll bring all the links. And again, this is uh, almost uh, verbatim. Uh, copy and paste uh, and uh, tied together uh, in part by me and then clarified by Kate. Again, thank you very much. So uh, that's that on that. Um, this this terrible guy, Dan Leff, uh, and I'm sure there's there's much, much more that could be told um, where you all fly on the wall uh, and, and many things. And, and also one of the links I'll be sharing, you ought to see what this guy did to uh, – the families of the guy there in, in Utah <clears throat> that they forced up. Well, uh, anyways, the guy committed suicide, and, and oh, how he played upon the family. Terrible, terrible man. Uh, the revolution will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised. The revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live.